Hello, this is Richard from Bookmark Games. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at uh, Pavlov's House today, uh, which we've got coming out in a few weeks' time. It's the game by uh, David Thompson, published through Dan Burson Games. This is the digital uh, adaptation. Uh, so, um, this is the front page. Uh, we've got lots of good stuff here. Obviously, there's the uh, usual game instructions. It sort of gives you a understanding of how to play the game. There's a tutorial in the game, of course, though. Um, with the uh, with some versions of the game, uh, that came with this fantastic uh, background document which uh, David wrote. Um, there's there's lots of fantastic stuff in here if you like, if you like looking through maps, uh, reading about the uh, the, the, the battle, uh, maybe looking at uh, more maps and timelines and things like that. Uh, it's all it's all really good stuff in here. Lots of lovely photographs and things as well that sort of explain the uh, battle in a lot of detail. However, let's go to the uh, to the game. Uh, we've got a few game modes here. There's the tutorial I mentioned, um, and then sort of the, the difficulty level ramps up. Really, I think as you sort of go through the levels so by introducing uh, sort of tactics cards and, and operations cards and things like that, just to sort of increase the uh, variety. So plenty to do here. Uh, we're going to play the standard game mode, and this takes us to the sort of overview of the game board here. So at the very top. Uh, it tells us what the current phase is, what our current score is. We can sort of look at the score and see how we're doing. Start with four points because there are four units in Pavlov's house. Uh, there are 62 Wehrmacht cards left. Uh, when that gets to zero, then the game ends. The current population in Pavlov's house is four soldiers. Um, and that's important to know because when we're using supplies here, um, occasionally they need to eat and you need one supply for every five units you have in Pavlov's house. Down at the bottom side of the board we've got uh, the cards. We're going to play the uh, Soviet card in a second and then we'll get to the Wehrmacht card phase after we've played our cards. Um, we can also see who's in, who's in Pavlov's house at the moment. There are four units that we've got in there uh, in reserves. And we can look at the reinforcements list and there are plenty of available reinforcements. There's a sort of mixture of weapons. And, uh, and units. And you can filter filter what you've got by uh, by clicking the filter buttons here if you're looking for certain types of units. Let's close that. Uh, finally, if we've got tactics cards in play, then they'll appear in the middle of the board here, but we're not using the uh, veteran or elite modes. Um, but we can look at the uh, current operational support option. Now, if I remove one ammo, one food, and one first aid package from the game, and none of these spaces are disrupted, and I'll win three points, and I might do that, we'll see. Um, and we'll get on and play the game. Well, maybe we'll just say uh, we've got some zoom modes here as well, so you can sort of zoom in on various spots on the on the board if you if you want to at various points. And reset that. So um, there are four phases of the game. The first phase is the Soviet card phase. So if I click on the deck here, we can look at the Soviet uh, card deck. Um, so the cards allow different actions. Um, there's a nice combination here, actually. This is this is this is complete luck. Um, so one of the things I mentioned earlier is we want to be able to make sure that we can feed our troops as we get to the end of each turn. Um, now to feed the troops, you need to get food from the stock here to the staging area and then shipped across the Volga into the supplies. So if I click on 62nd Army Command Post, you'll see there's a resupply option here. So I can resupply. One option would be to play the operational support card here and actually gain the points for that because I can use, I can spend the ammo and the food and the first aid. But I don't want to do that right now. I often do. I always get a bit greedy with that one. Um, if I click on operational support and operate, so resupply, I can move uh, tokens from the stage from the stock here to the staging area, and I'm going to move um, up to five tokens, as it says in the uh, in the report option. Always look at the report option here. It normally gives you a hint what you can uh, what you can do. So I'm going to move uh, two first, no, one first aid, three food, and a um, I forgot what these things are called now. Um, uh, a, a sapper. That's it. So uh, so let me move those. Commit, and then they'll move over. And so they're now in the in the staging area. Um, now you then need to load them onto your staging area on the Volga, and so you need to use one of these Volga military flotilla cards, and I'm going to do that to load the supplies, so click on the load supplies button, and then I'm going to move 
for my five that I've got here, I can load up three spaces. You can see the first one's highlighted now. I'm going to move the first aid and two food tokens. So they're moved. And now um, I get to play three of the four cards you see here. I'm going to play my third card. I'll have to play the top half and the bottom half of the card. I'm going to play the uh, military flotilla card. You see, I could look at the bottom card and ready my anti-aircraft up here, but I'm going to click on the military flotilla card, side of the same card, and deliver those supplies to Paphos House. We'll see the counts go up here. There we go. So we've now got supplies uh, delivered in Pavlos House, plenty of food, enough food for 20 men now. So we can maybe look in our next phases at populating Pavlos House a bit, uh, a bit more. However, um, of the four cards there, I only get to play three of them. That leaves the Wehrmacht card phase now. So if I click on the Wehrmacht card, um, we now have to go through these cards one at a time. So they're going to play a scout uh, unit that's going to end up somewhere um, on one of these tracks here. So uh, let's have a look. And that's ended up on track number one. Draw the next card. We've got a rifleman. And that's going on track five. <clears throat> and an attack building card. Now what happens here is that um, uh, randomly, one of the uh, one of the walls, so we've got three walls here, the green wall on the left, the red wall on the top, and the purple wall on the right. One of those walls will be randomly attacked, depending on, sort of, you can see the odds here. Um, and then another dice, or four dice in this case, because that's the attack value of the, uh, the, the uh, artillery, uh, will be rolled, and if one of those dice exceeds the, uh, the, the value of the wall, the defense value of the wall, which is at six, then... Uh, then it will be reduced in uh, in quality. So we click on that. So you can see we did roll a six. The green wall was the one that was chosen, and that's now um, reduced to five. With our sappers, we can we can buttress the wall and get it back up to six. But we don't have any sappers in Pavlos House at the moment, so that that isn't an option. So now it's the uh, the movement phase. Um, so I'm going to just move three units um, out of reserves to Pavlos House. So I'm going to click on the unit. Well, they're in reserves in Pavlov's house, but we're going to move them to our combat locations in Pavlov's house. I'm going to move uh, one over to this sort of radio space over here. One on I kind of like putting one on the red wall, one on the green wall, and one on the purple wall, just to uh, sort of cover all of the bases. Uh, now, the, the two units, uh, the, the, uh, the units on the, the green wall and the red wall, so the green wall unit can attack this green track uh, scout. It's got a five defense, which means it's going to be quite a difficult hit, but it's uh, probably worth a go. So I click on uh, Alexandrov there. So I've got three options. I can either attack, which is what we're going to do, or I can suppress, add some suppression from, from this sort of suppression, suppression counter here to the uh, suppression spot here, which allows me to defend against future um, incursions on the green track. Or I can so I'm occupying the radio space here. I can reinforce by calling two points of reinforcements out of the reinforcement supply here. But I don't want to do that. I'm not quite ready to do that just yet. We'll attack, I think. So I'll attack. Select the unit to attack. If there are more units here, I'd have a wider choice. But there's just one at the moment. And I need a five or more with a roll of one dice because that's Alexandrov's attack value to, uh, to score a hit. And the answer is a six. Hey, <laughs> isn't that lucky? So, um, so the unit's now been shot and removed. Uh, we'll try the same again with Glushenko. We get these pronunciations all wrong, but um, we press attack again. Um, this time I need a four, because that's the defense value of the rifleman. And let's attack uh, on a four or more. So I click on him and then attack. Okay. And the attack failed, because um, I only rolled a two, so he's still there. Um, and then finally, um, so this, this uh, soldier here, he can only suppress because there aren't any units in the purple track to attack. So I'll suppress, add some suppression. That's taken one suppression out of the uh, supplies and it's placed it on the, um, the sort of purple suppression counter. If we get any um, Wehrmacht units attacking down this road now, we'll have an option to use that suppression to try and suppress them, obviously. So there are the four phases, the uh, card phase, the... Um, Fairmark card phase, the movement phase, and then the uh, action phase. So we're back round to turn number two. So this time, um, so we've got a fog of war card, which we can't do anything with. If I click on it, then it'll actually use one of my card um, uses, which is a bit pointless. Um, I can though um, use I can I can use this uh, signal battalion to remove the fog of war if I want to. 
Um, I'm not inclined to at the moment because it's not really clogging up too much. Every time one of these spaces here gets bombed and it adds a fog of, fog of war card into the deck, so it sort of gets cluttered up quite quite nicely. Um, what we're going to do, I still have this operational support option here, so I'm going to take that now with the uh, 62nd Army Command Post. So I'll use the operational support and complete the action. I'll add three points to my score. Okay, so the score's back up to four again. Um, the score went down one because of the Wehrmacht unit on here, so we can sort of see now, uh, kind of got because we've got a Wehrmacht unit on the board, every, every unit's worth minus three points. But we've got three for operational support and we've got four units in Pavlov's house. Um, we'll set up some, um, there's going to be, a, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some some um, some bombing going on in the next uh, Wehrmacht card phase. So let's set some anti-aircraft up to defend against that. Um, now I like, everyone has their own preferences, but I like just for um, insurance reasons to uh, pop some, this is a remove fog of war dimension, pop some wireless comms up on, on the board here, um, just to sort of, if, if, if this, this space, this 18 space here becomes disrupted by a bombing attack more than once, then you lose the game and, and, and it sort of, this, this creates a good buffer to stop that happening. Uh, so, still no, no bombers, but we've got a building attack here and that's going to attack the red wall this time and it's succeeded again with the six on the dice and attack value of five. So that's gone down to five now. If it gets to th uh, below three, then we really have problems here, but at the moment it's all okay. Here's the first bombing run. So what I can do, so there are going to be two uh, bombs here, bombers here, or two bombing runs. We've got a defense of four. So if I select this now highlighted anti-aircraft unit, that will have two dice to try and score a four or more. So let's, uh, let's roll that. And they both failed with, uh, with a one and a three. So, so that's been used up now. Now we just have to click through each bombing run. So the first one, I think the sounds are a little bit loud, aren't they? Let's just turn it down a little. Uh, there we go. Um, so the first one disrupted space number 10, and the second one disrupted space number 6. So this always is always really painful when it happens here because it lands on your supply and it slows down supply. So I was trying to clear that up as fast as I can. Three more. Um, I've got no anti-aircraft now, so we'll just click through these quickly and we'll create a proper mess of the Volga supply. Four, I'm nothing sort of too near here, so I suppose in that sense that's quite good. Right, so we're now on to the uh, Soviet action phase. So I want to plot Pavlov somewhere safe um, and move on to the next phase. Uh, let's, let's, I'm going to get rid of that as well, actually. I can stop the prompt coming up on um, spare moves. There we go. So uh, Pavlov's got some commands to do. So Pavlov, um, he can attack, he can suppress, but he can also, being a commander unit here, um, can command up to three units to recover. Now these three units have got a yellow token next to them, which means that they are exhausted. Um, units can be disrupted as well if they've been maybe sort of uh, uh, fired at. Um, so I can use this command option to uh, recover all three of these uh, these units. They, they could recover individually if they wanted to, but um, but they can't. Uh, but but they they can they can only recover themselves. They can't recover anyone else. Pavlov can recover all of them. Now I'm out out of moves, so all three of these, having recovered, can't take another action this turn. And Pavlov himself has had an action. That's what the blue dot means. Um, so he can't take any more actions this turn. So all we can do is move on to the next phase, which is glowing down here to help indicate that. So now on to turn three. Uh, right, so um, sorry, I've got three cards remaining. Um, now, I would like to be able to get more units into Pavlov's house, but um, I don't have the option to do that right now. Certainly going to clear up some of the mess on the Volga, because I want to be able to get supplies across. Um, and I'm going to remove the Fog of War card, just to see. <laughs> so I drew another one as well. So that's really useful, isn't it? Um, it helps in the future, um, and we'll place this anti-aircraft there. And, uh, I don't think we you know, we don't have now the operational support action because the Volga is disrupted. Yeah, because the Volga is disrupted. Once that's not disrupted, still wouldn't have the option because we don't have any uh, any uh, food supplies in stock, and you need to remove one.
from stock, but um, I'll place the anti-aircraft unit there, I think. Yeah. So, just in time, let's fire this one up. And that's like one hit, so at least we've only got two, so I suppose it kind of broke even, really. Now we've got two more, which have flattened those parts of the map. Machine gun. Right, so we've got a machine gun unit on, on row six. Now we placed the suppression earlier. So if I add one, that will roll one dice to try and roll, in the case of this sort of four defense machine gun unit, um, a four or more. So let's open fire. And that missed. So the unit's been placed now in row one. More bombing. Um, you'll notice that we rolled a, a 10 there, but because you know, 10, the 10 already disrupted, 11 is disrupted, 12 and 13 disrupted, it places the disruption on 14, which is why I quite like this uh, this this, this um, signal battalion readied here, because it just, as I say, acts as a buffer before you get too close to 18. Um, now, I don't want to move, if I wanted to move, I may as well just do it to, to, to demonstrate, if I wanted to move Glushenko, I could click on him and then move him anywhere else I want to on the map. We'll just pop him there for now because I want to keep him on the red wall. Next phase. Right, we're going to recover Pavlov because he is very useful to uh, use that command action and then issue an attack order here. Missed, and another attack order on the purple wall, and that missed as well. So that were my, there were my three actions. Um, Alexandrov hasn't had a chance to play an action, but I might use him next turn. Back on the next phase. Right, this time I can start reinforcing Pavlov's house with some quality, good quality units. So let's click on reinforce. Now my favorite unit in the whole game is, where is he? He's near the end. Chekhov. Chekhov is a sniper, I think. Chekhov is fantastic. Um, and I'm going to confirm that he's going to be moved. So you get six points to spend, and you can see the yellow number here that allows uh, your spend if you want to move Chekhov and Hoholov. Um, and I'll click on him. We can see that we, we're spending two million points now, nine, so the option to move isn't there. I could, let's, let's click on there. If I wanted to, I could clear the selection and start all over again if I got the mess. We'll click on Chekhov and confirm that he's being sent to Pavlov's house and he's on his way. Um, we'll clear up the mess. Uh, we'll clear up the mess again on the Volga. Let's recover that. And now, so all four. Well, we've got f the five food tokens. Four of them are already there. But I think it's worth resupplying uh, with first aid. Definitely, um, that's used all of the first aid. So there's no first aid with the two used in stock. Um, we'll move. Uh, I'm not a great user of ammo, but I know people that do you know, use suppression a lot and uh, get their mortar units over as fast as they possibly can, but I have not done that. So let's move that there. That was the third action. If I can light up all four of these um, uh, signals units, then I get to use four cards, but um, I haven't done that, so I'm kind of using three. Right, a resupply action. So when we do the resupply, as it says here, you have to use one food token for every five defenders. We've got five defenders in Pavlov's house. So I'll use, I'll use one food token, so we're down to three food. Uh, so let's click on that, and then we'll, it'll leave a storm group up in Pavlov's house. Fantastic. So that's one we can use as well. Now the storm group, let's uh, have a closer look, is the storm group on the metal workers' house. Um, it's based on, on the green track being clear, and you can see vaguely behind me it's clear. It would require, it's got a defense of 12, um, and every unit that I send to it rolls one dice, apart from storm group units or storm specialist units that get an extra dice or two. I can't remember how many. It's worth six victory points at the end of the game, so we'll want to do that if we can. So we want to try and keep this green track clear. So here's the first armor. Um, so uh, if even if I had any suppression counters here, it wouldn't make any difference. Armor moves of its own accord anyway. And that's gone to track six. Now if this track here fills up, and I can't place any more units on it, then I lose the game. For, fortunately, we've still got one empty spot here, which I could place um, a um, sapper unit into, but um, I'm not going to do that just yet, because I haven't got any in Pavlov's house. More armor. Let's uh, see. Now, the problem with this one is that it's gone onto the green track, which now isn't free anymore, so I can't use this storm group until I can remove that armor unit. But we are in the movement phase now. 
Um, so let me click on Chekhov. We'll place Chekhov up. Now some of these spaces can see both the red and the purple um, tracks. So Chekhov will be quite good there at the moment because you can attack both this unit here and this unit here. So I'm going to place Chekhov just there. I'm not going to move any more units and we'll go to the next phase. So let's get Chekhov's attack out. I'm going to attack, so because obviously I'm a bit worried that the uh, purple track here is filling up, I'm going to attack with uh, Chekhov and we'll attack this infantry unit. Now Chekhov is so fantastic because he gets to roll four dice with his attack of four. Um, and if he can't score a four or four dice, then I'll send him somewhere special. Uh, so let's click on the uh, unit. There we go. We've got two hits, but one is enough. And that unit's destroyed. Uh, right now, uh, Alexandrov can suppress, so he can't attack the tank because he's not an anti tank unit. So we need to bring in some anti tank units to do that as soon as we can. Um, he could re I think it's probably worth using him to reinforce now to bring in an anti tank unit. As I said, he's got two points for the reinforcement, and we'll bring in uh, maybe one of the soldiers here, that one. So he's now in, in reserves, we can see him there. And Pavlov, I think the best thing to do is just recover one of these exhausted units. I've only got one action remaining. So Pavlov could use one to recover two, but I'd rather use them to maximize his potential a bit more. Uh, so we'll just recover that unit there. And we're on to turn five. Right, so look, we've got lots of 13 guards, rifle division unit um, cards now. So we're gonna use those to get the rest of the anti-tank unit into Pavlov's house, so let's use uh, this one here. So let's get the best pieces we can get. So we'll take that one and that one. So that's my six points. Confirm, and now if we look in the reserves, we've got a nice anti-tank unit properly tooled up in Pavlov's house. Uh, the next thing to do, I also like to get um, commanders in. If you can get all three commanders in Pavlov's house, then rather than just three actions, you get to take four actions, so it's worth doing that. So let's click on command units, um, which leaves me two spare, um, and sometimes try and keep the population down. We're going to do a storm group anyway, aren't we? So I think um, it's probably worth just taking in a machine gun unit maybe for later on. No, I'm going to take another anti-tank gun, I think, for now. So I find more than one helps. Put that one in, and we'll do the same with uh, with the other card. We'll take Nelmov, so we'll be able to get them in. And let's take another anti-tank unit as well. Very good. Now, we need to survive this card phase, so obviously sixes are coming up. Number six, more bombing. That's why this, this unit here was very, very much worthwhile. Um, now it's been vaporised. But uh, we'll sort that out in a minute, hopefully. Let's get this anti-tank unit on. So um, so now we want to pick a combination of pieces. I will take this inspirational unit. They get an extra dice roll when they're attacking. Um, or, or all units get an extra dice roll. All anti-tank units get an extra dice roll when they're attacking. Um, and we'll place that up here. Um, it's always a bit of a risk going in a corner because they could be attacked from both sides but um, one move remaining we'll get we'll move the command units later on actually I think. Um, so I won't worry about that. My mouse has decided now is a really good time to lose its connection but never mind. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next phase and then take care of... no I'm gonna move, uh, move one command unit in here. There we go. Okay, so the anti-tank unit can now attack. That's going to use two actions because we've got two, two sort of attacking units here. Um, and we'll attack the armor. Now, the anti-tank unit has an attack of four, um, but also because one of them has an inspiring unit, then um, they'll get an attack. They will get to roll five dice to score four or more against this unit. There we go. And uh, the four is good enough. So as you can see again, the storm group's available again. So hopefully we can do something about that next go. Um, with that in mind, we're going to recover. Not the storm group. I never send Chekhov on storm groups. He's far too uh, far too useful. <clears throat> right. Let's see what the card draw looks like. 
Right, so we can go on a storm group. So let's, let's do that. Uh, so we've got the storm group option here now. So, so this shows us the units that can attack on the storm group. Um, so I'm not going to send Chekhov. Some of them, like Pavlov, have um, uh, a sort of storm, uh, storm group bonus. So they roll an extra dice when they go on a storm group. I'm not going to send all of my commanders. Um, now the problem I have is I only have one fair state token in Pavlov's house. And um, uh, going on a storm group often results in casualties. So I'm only going to take, I don't want to take the command units because I don't want to lose them apart from Pavlov. So I think that's going to be, each unit consists, um, basically gives you four dice to roll. Uh, sorry, one dice to roll per unit and, and uh, one per unit and then um, one for the, I think it's one more for the storm. It might be two. So that's going to be four dice rolls. Um, we're going to try to get a 12. So four threes are 12. So I think the, the odds are reasonable. So we'll charge. And we, it was five dice, and we got more than a 12 there, so that was uh, good. Pavlov was wounded. Uh, Glushenko returns safely, so he's okay. Yakimenko was wounded in the assault. So let's close. So, but the assault was a great success. So we've got an extra 12 points on the score when we close this. Um, we had two wounded units. We've got one first aid token, so we can make the tough decision. Pavlov will survive, uh, but Yakimenko won't. So let's press on OK. All run. Um, all storm group units are now back in reserves, including Pavlov. Um, let's close that. And our score bumped up to 11. So we've got uh, 11 units in Pavlov's house, and we've got six points for the storm group raid. Right, <clears throat> so a total score of 11. Um, and that, I think, that is an introduction to Pavlov's house. I think we've covered most things and the game goes around, you use your cards, it gets tougher. I've got an awful lot of work to do here cleaning up um, where the, uh, the, the, the space is disrupted. There are fewer bombing raids later in the game so I should be able to clear that up um, and to press on through the next 47 cards. I um, hope this has been really useful showing you, uh, showing you the game. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing it and um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be available on the, the Apple App Store and Steam by the end of February. So thanks for now.